wife is not legal. She's from Europe. She's legal. She's legal. How is she? What, she was born she has, in Europe. Okay, why, why would she? Why would her husband be yeah. running for president? If but she, she has U.S. citizenship. So that that's just because she was born in another country does not mean she has a legal okay, citizenship. That's, that's fine. You, you don't have to. Real to. Land. If he's and elected, he would be born in Europe. Europe. That, that makes, Europe. Europe. makes her illegal. This guy has a very small grasp of reality, and I would say. He's the one who uh, who is a racist. He's wearing a Black Lives Matter T-shirt and uh, obviously rejecting all lives matter. So there's the video right now. It's got a, over a million views on our YouTube channel, probably. I think on our Facebook post, other people grabbed it on Facebook, and it's got millions of views on Facebook. Just a young man. His name is Quaterius Manuel. Hey, how are you going? Pretty good, pretty good. So do you see how it works? Just by standing up and just standing there and letting the opposition talk themselves into a hole, you could really make these people look like fools. Yeah, that's right. And so had, had, had you been sparring with this guy verbally before, or did this just all happen spontaneously? So um, I woke up, obviously, you know, the night before I learned out that Trump was coming to Atlanta. So I decided I wanted to come to go see Trump because he's my candidate, as you can see. And so I went in line with my friend Brett and I and Callie and Mallory. So we were sitting there and then the guy came to us. He approached us and he just started attacking us verbally. And then we 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 tried our best to inform him on on issues. And he obviously did not know he called the KKK the KK. He didn't know what legal immigration was. It was just insane. So, yeah. Was, yeah, I, mean, I think the funniest was thing was that he wants to ship guy. black people back to Africa. That, to me, was one of the funniest statements I've ever heard from a grown man. Uh, and he's not calling shipping anybody back. He's just saying, people who've broken the law, illegal immigrants. He's saying, hey, we have to have a system. We have to ship these people back. He goes, we may even allow them to come back in, but we have to clean, kind of clean the slate before we can deal with what's going on in this country. And right now, it's crazy. The border's wide open, the southern border. They're saying there's more illegals pouring over the border now uh this year already than all of last year and last year was a record year yeah um like i said like i mean these liberals they just want they just want free stuff and and, and, and trump is not buying it he's not buying it we're not going to continue to let our country come we're not going to continue to let our country go that go to the ground when trump is our president because he's going to stop illegal immigration and people don't want to hear that because they know when when he gets in office is america going to be great again great again and the liberal media does not want america to be great based off conservative values they want america to be great based off liberal values and that's just and that's just it and i would not, agree and i'll lump the republicans in there with the democrats who who like illegal immigration because the democrats like it because it creates a big voting base and the Republicans like it is because it creates a form of cheap labor that they can exploit. And I say shame on both these groups, shame on exploiting people, because in addition to just bringing people in as, as uh, cheap labor, you're all, you're, how many people are dying just to make that journey because they think there's a glimmer of hope that they can get in? How, how much of the drug trade is fueled by this, the coyote trade? I mean, we're keeping really bad people in power and in money, uh, well-financed, just by allowing this system to continue. Exactly the rate. I mean, look at all these illegal Mexicans. They come in here, and and I I was um I don't know if you know anything about Georgia, but I was in Dunwoody, and then I saw I was out there playing soccer with my friend, and then we noticed some Hispanics come up to us. I'm not, I'm just doing what I'm just profiling, you know, based off what information I was getting using my context clues, something I was taught to do in third grade. But um, so I I used them. I asked them, and they were. They, first of all, they didn't know any English. And I was like, well, how old are you? He's like, I'm 15. It's like, okay, what school do you go to? You know, I'm, I'm 16. I want to know what school you go to. So we're not going to school yet. We're just working. I was like, so how did you get here? He's like, I got here two weeks ago. It's like, how? He was like, he was he just he didn't get, couldn't give me answers because he didn't learn English. So I just assumed he was illegal. I was like, where are you from? He was like, well, my cousin's from Mexico. I'm from Guatemala. And I said, well, well why are you here? He was like, you know, we, we come here because we it's better opportunity. I said, well, are you legal? Do you have ID, a citizenship or anything? He was like, no. And then that's when some more started coming towards me. And, you know, basically, I think it was one guy, you know, a little English. And he asked, he was like, why are you in front of my friend? I was like, because he's illegal. And I don't, and I don't agree with legal immigration. 
So long story, long story short, we ended up reporting, got to the police officers, and the police um, got the guy in custody. I don't know anything about him now, but yeah, I mean, it just shows you how how much they come over. They're they're making their way to Georgia now. So there was a report last week of a, an 18 wheeler driver who just stopped in the middle of at a rest stop, and uh, it was on his way, I think, to um, some some other city. He was, he was coming from El Paso. He stopped in the middle let out a whole truckload of illegals and they were just wandering around the truck stop. They didn't even know where they were. I mean, th this is not right on so many levels. So people who sit there and say illegal immigration is good, it's not doing anything. It's not helping any side of the equation. And it's also driving down our, our, our wages if people want to look at it that way. But what, uh, Quiet, what got you into Trump in the first place? What, what really attracted you to him? So originally I was, I've been always Republican. Um, I grew up in a conservative home, obviously in Georgia, suburbs of Georgia. Um, I did not like Trump at first. I'm out of the dislike him. He was my second option. My number one option was Ted Cruz because I thought Ted Cruz has conservative principles that I was for as far as like free market, stuff like that. That's true conservative on the economic side. You know what I mean? So, and I thought he had this, this great Christian belief because I am a individual Christian. I love Christianity. That's just my religion. And I thought Ted Cruz was the closest guy to Reagan. That's what I thought. And then I thought Ted Cruz spoke to the people. I thought he was more than just a politician because he was the outsider. I mean, like, I don't know if you knew, but everybody knew that Ted Cruz was not liked in Washington because they didn't like his ideals. And so I thought he was the guy that I needed to take on Washington with his conservative values. Values, And then and then once he dropped out when he lost Indiana primary, I was devastated. You know, I was like, oh, my God. It, it, and then also what made me influence my decision, if you saw the latest polls of CNN and Fox are coming out, Ted Cruz is beating Hillary by over like 11 points. And Donald Trump was losing to Hillary by like 16. So I was like, well, where is Donald Trump path to, to, to winning um, the presidency? So I thought about that, too, when I was picking my candidate at first. And anyway, so Ted Cruz, I had Ted Cruz, and he dropped out. I was a little lost. So I took a two-week break from politics. And then I started researching into Donald Trump. And I started researching the why the liberal media portrays Donald Trump this way when I mean, he's really not. I mean, he has some of the biggest black supporters. You have Herman Cain. I mean, you can just go on and on, but that's just one big guy. And, and I looked into it, I was like, he's not this person. So why are the media doing that? And I thought Donald Trump had a chip on his shoulder. And I thought, I'm going to support this guy because, for one, he's a GOP nominee, so I'm going to support the nominee. I'm not like, I have so much respect for the Bush family, but I don't understand why they would not support the GOP nominee when it goes against Hillary. And I'm that guy that's like anyone but Hillary. And then I like, I fell in love with his policy. You don't like immigration, education, getting rid of Common Core, et cetera. So. Yeah, and he's got a pretty favorable uh, economic plan. Uh, a lot of people have looked at it and said, this is the. This plan is going to put money back in everybody's pocket, his uh, tax program. He's also come out and said he wants to save Social Security and Medicare, which I think is a, an issue on both sides. People want to see how it can be saved. Obamacare is the worst thing that could ever happen to America, and he is going to repeal that. Yeah, so. yeah it's, it's amazing the way um, the, the system has all lined up on both sides, and they're afraid of Trump. They don't want to see him win, and it makes you wonder, why is that? What What is so scary about a guy? Oh, and they put out arguments like, oh, he's not a politician. He hasn't been in politics. We've had enough of politicians as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And um, and like, like well, that's a good point, because right here in the state of Georgia, we had a politician and governor, Nathan Deal. And every time you think we have a great politician, they always eventually sell out. Look at Marco Rubio. He sold out to to Florida. He sold he sold out, sold himself out to to Washington for Florida. I mean, look at um, Governor Dill. He sold the state of Georgia out for some money from. I mean, all these politicians, all they John McCain. He's been selling Arizona out for forever. I mean, all these politicians, all they do is sell out and they just get their money and they don't even care about the people. I want somebody who I'm proud to say I'm president and and I love George W. Bush, but. There is nobody I think I've ever been proud of the most besides Ronald Reagan ever since he's been in office. I wasn't even born at that time, but I know my parents, they they love him. I looked at his policies. He tore down that wall. He he's done so much great things to America. And they took the heat and he took the heat for it. And I just think it's unfair that if you have like like good like you made a good point. You said I'm done with politicians. I think Trump is finally that outsider that we need. 
because Ronald Reagan was an outsider. I mean, everybody knows that, you know? So well, it, it was bound to happen where people would get sick and tired of the same old system uh, of, of, of just the same garbage coming down, the same talking points. Uh, the, the Republicans have their talking points. The Democrats have theirs. We would have never had, uh, you know, anything except Trump's come in and really kicked the system to the curb, especially with his political correctness.